Hello everyone, it was requested that in a few comments made by a guy I do a test of the Draeger M65 to see if, see if these old masks are still sort of gas proof. So if you haven't seen these videos before, what I do is I put a filter on them. I don't have an original filter for this mask, I've just got an American C2 filter on there because I'm pretty sure this filter works and I've tested it before. If it fails with this filter I'll get another filter just to give the mask a fair chance. Um, so what I do is I put the mask on um, with a filter. I put myself in an enclosed space, as in the toilet, um, I shut the door, and I sprayed a room full of air freshener. Now, I'm asthmatic, and it's an enclosed space with lots of air freshener. So if I don't have the mask on, I'll start choking, basically. Um, so you can see where this is going. Um, I'll have the mask on, and I'll spray the room full of air freshener, and then I'll wait a couple of minutes filming it, with me, you know, the mask on with me wearing it. If um, I survive being gassed with this mask on, we know that the mask is still airtight, still pressure sealed, and some of these old surplus masks are still good. Now, the East Germ not the East Germ sorry, the West Germans had this mask and Unified Germany had this mask from 1965 as the name would imply, Drager M65. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in case it went into service a year or two later. Up until I believe the mid 90s where it's been replaced by whatever the current issue German mask is. This thing looks a lot cooler anyway. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to do, put the mask on, gas myself, and then uh, see, you know, how well it holds up. So let's go for it. Right, hopefully you can see I'm in the shit and I've got my mask on. So, what we're going to do now is gas the room. Now, what you should do with a gas mask, first of all, to test it's actually airtight, is to do a um, seal check. So what I'm going to do is block the intake port on the filter and the mask should pressurise to my face. This means that the mask's airtight. This was the old standard of how they used to do it. People have told me now that really there's like four methods you should do, but this is the old method and it works. So you put your hand over the filter. And as you can see, because it's suffocating me, the mask is pressurised. So just once more, hand over the filter, blocks the intake. Mask pulls itself tight to your face, you're sucking all the air out of the mask. The mask is therefore pressurised. So, if I smell anything now, we know it should be the filter at fault, not the mask, because um, if the mask pressurised and I'll suffocate with it on, the only way air's getting through is through the filter. So, in theory, it's the filter that's broken. So, as I said, let's shake these up, and then let's spray the shit. Now, hopefully I haven't got any on the camera, or none that's actually blocking the viewfinder. Uh, what I'll just do, bear with me. There we go. Now, I reckon I can ever so slightly smell that. So, I think that this filter is on its way out, because I can smell that. If there was an actual chemical weapon, I'd be dead. So... Yeah, I can get it. It's definitely not as strong as if I broke the seal on the mask, because if I did that, then um, I'd start choking. But I can ever so faintly smell it, which means some is getting free. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to swap to a different filter, uh, and I'll try another filter that should be working, and try this test again, because it's unfair to rule out the mask on one filter that's been open for ages, because it could just be the filter that's too old. So let's try it with a new filter. Right, I have the new filter on and I can't see anything. When I say new filter, I mean it's an S6 sort of fil British filter from the 80s that's been unsealed for ages, but I can't smell anything for it. So it was my C2 filter wearing out before. But just to prove that um, I'm not lying, I'm going to spray some more. I'm going to spray it away from the camera so it doesn't uh, try and fog up the lens. Right, now I'm going to start a timer on my watch and we'll see if it still works, right? Just taking big breaths. Now, at the moment, I can't smell anything, so um, we think the mask is all good, and it was the old filter. Right, timer starting now. And I don't know if you can see that very well, but I have started a timer. I'll give it about two or three minutes, and then we'll see what the results are. Yeah, can't smell anything. I don't know how good the seal of this is with my face. Uh, not that I can smell. No, but. What I'm saying is, compared to some masks, I think there's a bit of a flaw here. Where your chin sits, that seems like a little bit of a weak point in the mask. I'm sort of wondering if I, if I am getting very faint whiff of anything, but 
it's almost could be your mind playing tricks, I think, a bit with some of these masks, because, um, you know, let's just do a filter check again. Yeah, no, I can't smell anything. It's still pressurised, yeah, because I think part of the problem is, with these old masks, is, like, well, where a mask can actually fail, obviously, is if the rubber um, wears out on it. So valves fail. Let's say when the voice diaphragm is there, we could have uh, that fail and air could get in through there, which we know from pressure checking it can't. There could be bits around the lenses. Or where the cushion of the mask sits against my face, there could be a problem there. But from what I can tell at the moment, that's not an issue. Um, I definitely can't smell anything. So when I take this off in a minute or two, we'll see how much it affects me. But another issue, of course, is where I've taken the mask off the first time where I could smell stuff getting through. What could have happened there as well is if some of that is now almost contaminated the inside of the mask. Yeah, then you could have, you know, it getting in there. Well, see, that's how you do one of the pressure checks. Hold down on the exhale valve and... And the other ones. But yeah. No, I, I think this is working with this filter. As I said, I have um, a load of Israeli filters that are still within 10 years of shelf life, but I've got those sealed on purpose in case I need them for anything. But what this test shouldn't do is um, suggest that this mask would hold up against every sort of chemical weapon. Because as masks age, they do get more vulnerable to rubber. And some of the chemical agents are really nasty that they could just blister their way through the mask. And as we have said in other videos, the reality is in a nerve gas attack, you wouldn't survive it simply because of the fact that, um, you know, how strong nerve agents are and how little would need to touch your skin to kill you. I need the full chemical suit on plus the mask and then... The filter could fail, a bit could fail in the mask, the suit could fail, you know. So, yes, newer masks are much more likely to protect you, but against the sort of things people advertise them and sell them for ridiculous money to, you know, people with no training to claim that they could save you, I really don't think it's worth it. Because I think in the event of a, you know, really nasty chemical act, you'd be dead anyway. But what we are saying is, could the mask like this protect you from tear gas if you got one in a good condition? That's not to say all these surplus masks are in good condition. But could it protect you? Well, certainly. If you had a new filter on that definitely works, and the mask is airtight, there is no reason why you can't be protected from tear gas and potentially other chemical sort of frats. But we'll go on tear gas or an industrial gas leak. So I can't smell anything through this mask, and we have hit 3 minutes and 36, that's probably going to be very hard to view on the camera, but... So I'll break the seal any moment now, and then what we'll do is we'll see what happens, and I bet you I will cough and splutter, because I bet that strong is going to, smell is going to be so much stronger. What I'll do first is I'll just break the seal on the mask, and we'll see how strong the smell is when I break it. <coughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... That definitely smells. Uh, right, this is a bit you'll find funny that I don't particularly like very much. I'm going to take the mask on, I'm going to take a big lung full of air, and I'm going to cough and splutter everywhere. Right, here goes. <coughs> yeah, right, I'm holding my breath now. Right, so um, I think that the M65 actually held up pretty well, all things in comparison. Obviously, I put a new filter on it. Uh, the filter I had on it before was the C2 filter. That has worked in previous tests. But if you look at here, um, one of the dates on it is 92, which I'm going to assume this is a filter from 1992. The other dates could be 03 or 01. So it's no later than 2003, but I think these filters were discontinued before that because of the chromium uh, risk. So it's most likely a filter from 1992. Now, considering I've had this filter open um, for years, literally, it worked the first time I used it, and this filter is 20 plus years old, about 24 years old, um, 24, 25 years old. Um, yeah, it's it. And I didn't get much of a smell through it, so the filter held up pretty well. It give you very good protection from tear gas. Maybe not total protection, but you could get out of an area much better than a cloth over your mouth with one of these masks on. Um, so this filter that I put on it instead, let's see if I can get a date on this one. Um, Leyland and Birmingham. Does it have a 
D10 canister particulate and vapor. Uh, no, I can't see a date easily on that. Let me just get this off. See if there's something anywhere else on the filter. Sorry if it's all out of frame. I'm just trying to see if I can find a date stamped on there. No, I can't see a date on this filter, but the S6 filters were stopped use in probably the 80s when they switched the S10. So this is a filter even older than this one, but it works. So um, what that tells you is, you know, the mask's not at fault really here, although it's more vulnerable than a new mask, obviously. Um, it's the filter. So... If I was to put one of my newer filters on there, let me just get it down. Like I said, I'm not breaking one of these open for the sake of the video. But if you look at the sticker I've got on my Israeli filter, you will see it says... Do, 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 do... 12.02.08. So, unless that's the expiry when this was meant to run out, and it was before that... Um, I'm assuming that's the manufacture date, 120208, so that means it should be in theory fine until 2018. I do need to buy some more filters. Um, what Tombo said in the other thing where I mentioned it in the video, industrial filters are a much cheaper way to go normally if you can get 40mm industrial filters and they're better for what you'd want as a civilian. But, yeah, I can't fault the mask really. Um, I say the chin bit's a bit vulnerable here, the sort of breaking the seal although it is a nice comfortable mask um, but yeah it's not the mask fault it's the filters and uh, similar to masks filters have a shelf life but filter shelf lives are much more important because after the 10 year period for a mask um, that's when it's not fit really for military service but there's no guarantee it's going to break it's just kind of like if you have food in a tin that's best before is before a certain date it could potentially be you know, years and years, decades even, that the, um, you know, like everything's intact and it's fine to eat. Um, same goes for the mask. The filter, however, is although it could still work after that date, it probably won't. And once the filter's been opened, like both of these have, and been exposed to the elements, the filter can obviously start to degrade. Activated charcoal could dry out. Well, not really dry out, but you know what I mean. Adsorb too much, just, you know, I have um, in this room like um, one of those oil things which makes me, I burn incense sometimes in here, like scented candles, whatever else that's obviously all gonna get make its way into filters if they're stored in this room that aren't sealed but yeah I hope that answers your question whoever was interested in these videos it does seem that the West German M65s um, do hold up obviously you do need one in a good condition as it is a surplus mask but this one pressurizes and with a working filter I couldn't smell anything so Thumbs up to the M65, uh, it does its job still, um, many, many years on.